finishing off Friday the 13th Ultimate DVD Collection with Friday the 13th Part 8. Claire, Jason takes Manhattan. Or rather, a cruise ship headed to Manhattan. With a mask lit by a disco ball. I'm not really complaining that it doesn't take place mostly in Manhattan. I don't get why anyone would want it to take place entirely in Manhattan. How well did that work out for Predator, huh? It is interesting to note that this actually fares far worse than the likes of, you know, Crocodile Dundee, other movies that take the whole fish out of water kind of approach to a recognizable character, even though I don't know that Crocodile Dundee was a recognizable character before the first movie, but whatever. In this one there is a girl who hallucinates and she's afraid of water, and that's pretty much all I can really give away without spoiling anything. Well, her hallucinations are of a young boy drowning, and it's clearly meant to be Jason, but he's not bald, and he's not mongoloid. At one point he does little thriller dancing moves, I don't know. Anyway, a bunch of young people are on a boat. Other people are as well, but they don't matter because they completely disappear from the movie once Jason gets his killing on. I don't know exactly how it was that Crystal Lake suddenly has, you know, an outlet or whatever, you know, to take it out to, to take Jason out to sea, but whatever. The effects are actually pretty good. There just aren't a whole lot of them. For example, one of the hallucination scenes, I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you'll know what I mean when you see it. It's pretty darn well done. Other than that, I really can't say too much positive about this one. I'll be perfectly honest, I didn't connect with it at any point. Not at all. I didn't care for any of the characters. We again have an extremely obnoxious one, and the rest are just not that interesting. It is worth noting that this is a bit of a horror comedy. It's really not only played for the scares. There's also some bits played for laughter. I didn't really enjoy any of them except for a single line, but you might, you know. I didn't like most of the, well, a lot of the supposedly funny stuff in the Nightmare on Elm Street sequels either, so. Jason's look is made less interesting, although near the end it does get pretty cool. It's a bit unfortunate that it's made less interesting because his look being frickin' badass was the one good thing about the seventh movie, New Blood. The kills are some of the most uninspired of the entire franchise. There's maybe one or two that are pretty decent, but other than that, they were really running out of ideas. I mean, go back, watch the first one. Those are more interesting kills. By far. The acting is, again, not very good. The music seems to laugh mockingly sometimes when people die, which is kind of interesting. The movie is longer than it has any right to be. It's at least 90 minutes. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about this one. It's just boring and... The Jason performance is, again, at least pretty good. Kane Hodder doesn't really let you down, ever. I haven't seen him be a letdown in anything I've seen him in, so... 
there's not really any stalking going on. We do see Jason a fair bit. I will admit that they did actually get some good stuff out of the cruise ship setting, and I can see why that was chosen over a freaking big city. What What is interesting about being stalked in a city where there's constantly people around? The whole point of Jason is that there's no one else around. You know, you get a dozen teenagers, you split them up, and they die one by one. That's the point. You know, New York might not be the most brotherly, loving, caring, let's all hug kumbaya kind of city, but there are a lot of people, last I checked. I don't see what the point is of bringing a slasher villain there. But the cruise ship actually is a decent enough setting. It's got the isolation, it's got the, you know, you could see yourself panicking on a cruise ship once things start going south. And they do okay with that. If I had cared about any of the characters, if the kills had been somewhat more interesting, if there had been any kind of stalker thing going on, I would probably have liked it. But I didn't. Because there wasn't. That was my spoiler for review of Friday the 13th Part 8. Jason takes Manhattan. I hope you enjoyed.